Hey everybody, welcome. And uh, alert viewers will have noticed by now, you yes, are not baby. Heather Abraham. I am not Heather. Uh, <laughs> it's Mikey here. Yeah. But I am sad that Heather is not here today because she would have loved to have been here today to celebrate the first day of spring. I know, it's the first day of spring. Happy spring, everyone. Happy spring, Happy spring. David. Thank you. Happy spring to you. This is the fabulous Mikey Hood joining us this morning. And maybe Heather took the day off because she's so excited about spring. She needed to celebrate just on her own <laughs> she out really, there somewhere. She really hates the cold. <laughs> yeah, she does. And you learn something about the first day of spring, something you can do supposedly on the first day of spring, right? I did, David. I did my research and mm -hmm. I learned that you can balance an egg on the first day of spring, the spring equinox. And so yes. I brought some so eggs. So you brought some from eggs. Home. And we're going to practice. We have not practiced this thus far. Not at all. So on live television, where an egg could roll off and smash, we're going to try this. All right. So I'll try one too. All right. All right. So we have a little paper towel here. Mm -hmm. So you should be able to stand it up, is all what right. we've been told, right? There's no real technique to this. You just have okay. to hold it steady. Okay. And Are you getting no, it? No. It okay, I'm going to try it on the glass, see okay. if that makes a difference. I'll keep the paper here. Oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Marie is looking at us. Marie, our, our floor director here, like, oh. I don't want to clean up a broken egg. <laughs> David, All right, this isn't working. This is not working. This is what my life has come to, balancing <laughs> eggs. <laughs> I know. <laughs> on live TV. But what we actually learned in researching this is that you should be able to balance an egg mm -hmm. any time of the year. It's right. just folklore that you can only do it on the first day of spring. You should be, uh, we can't. We can't even do, do it, it on the, any day. <laughs> any day. But uh, so, so said, you can do it every day. Uh, something else that's, that's kind of special today is that I want to mention personally, it's my dad's birthday. Uh, Larry Highfield, uh, and hopefully he's watching right now, 78 oh, years look old at today. Him. He's so cute, and I David. love my dad so much. He has always loved and supported me. That's when we took him to Carol Burnett at Heinz Hall. Okay. Uh, but yeah, uh, so happy birthday to my dad. And uh, you know what? I actually call him Da, because my first word I ever said was Da. Da, Ta like D A. D A. No D. And I've never put the, the D on the end. Mm -hmm. I continue to call him Da. Uh, I like so that. I sound like it's I'm like a, a mom, ma, ma, dad. Yeah, ma, it makes dad. Sense. yeah. So anyway, mm -hmm. happy birthday, dad. Happy birthday, daddy. And so speaking of birthdays, it's actually Mr. Rogers' birthday today. He yeah. would be 91 years old. Yeah, he was born in 1928. And of course, we all love Mr. Rogers. We're waiting for the Tom Hanks movie about him to come out. And to celebrate, the Children's Museum of Pittsburgh is offering free admission today and throwing a birthday party. It starts at 10 a.m. Mr. McPeel, Mr. McFeely, not Mr. McPeely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll be there as well, and uh, so it should be a good time. Yeah, so speedy delivery. Speedy delivery. All right. Well, speaking of, we said, we said uh, Mr. Rogers was 91 years old. Actually, my grandmother, she's 89 years she's old. 89. And I wanted to bring her up because I just love my grandmother. I moved in with her when I went away to college. She lives in Maryland, and she actually, she didn't buy me my first car, but she gave me my first car and she sold it oh. to me for a dollar. It was actually a Toyota Camry with rubber bumpers, an 89 Toyota Camry <laughs> with rubber bumpers. And the fact that she sold it to me for a dollar, it, it taught that's, me something. Well, that's a fantastic grandmother and also smart. Yes. Because if it's your first car and you <laughs> I'm thinking she knew something about like and she was right. Yes, skills. I hit a lot of things. But the one thing that I really adore about my grandmother is that she is still very active. She still drives. She's still That's out great. putting on fashion shows for her friends. And she just she gets out to walk and she's more active now than what she was 20 years ago. That's a fantastic example. What's her name? Yes. Her name is Nell. I Nell. call her I call her Grammy. OK. Grammy. Grammy. All right. Well, hi, Nell. She'll want to say hi. She, she's in Maryland, so she won't see this right now, but I'll take the replay to her. Okay. Maybe yeah. if she has a very strong antenna, she can pick it up. <laughs> she might. All right. I hear you are considering doing something that I absolutely despise. Oh, boy. How'd you hear, David? Well. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so moving, moving. Why is moving so stressful? 
Why is it? It just is. There's a lot to consider. I mean, you have to gather everything up, and you, it requires you to be organized. Right. And, you, and I know right. you have a plan for this. Right? I do have a plan. First of all, well, my first plan is to understand that it's going to be stressful. And so if I can yeah. prepare myself ahead of time to know that, then that's the first step. But the second step is actually labeling. So, for example, for my kitchen, I'll have a box in the kitchen. And then all of my pots and my pans, they go in that one box, and then I label it kitchen. Right. And then I'll do the same thing in the living room. I'll have a box in the living room. Everything Makes from the sense. living room stays in the living room, and I label that box living room. And so then when the movers come, they move those boxes to the exact yeah. same room in the newer space. But I have one addition to that. What's I'm going that? to label a box that says need now. And so oh, everything yeah. that I need that right so away smart. will go in that box. Right. No, I think you have a system down. You're going to make it easy for yourself. I'm going to try. And it's a good time to move, actually, in Pittsburgh, because yeah. if you're buying a house in Pittsburgh, we have ranked really well on a list again for first-time home buyers. Pittsburgh is ranked number one. Wow. Yeah, number one. And this, you were saying this is the second yeah, time we've been on this list? Yeah, this is actually the second time we're on this list. Yeah, and, and a lot of it is that homes are affordable here, which is a really nice thing. Uh, at the bottom of the list, Los Angeles and Sacramento, and uh, San Francisco. Oh. And, and I have a theory about why San Francisco is number one on the worst list. What's your theory, David? Uh, because of this next house that we're about to show you. No one wants to move next to this house. It is in the area of San Francisco. It is called the Flintstones house. Uh, so this woman bought this house and has turned it into a Flintstones uh, not uh, retrospective, like she's honoring the Flintstones. There's a big yabba dabba do sign. Uh, so that is hideous. <laughs> That's a, that's a yabba dabba don't. It's a yabba dabba don't. <laughs> yeah, so you might not want to move next to her. And in fact, she's in some legal wranglings because the city wants her to tone it down a bit. But, I, you know, I applaud her creativity. Yeah, you know what, David? I think if you're, if you're a spectator driving by, it's great. But if you're actually living in that neighborhood and you paid good money to have a beautiful house and you want yeah. a beautiful neighborhood to reflect that, this is just not appealing. Well, just the crowds of people that would come to look at right. it. Right. And it kind of reminds me of stories we've done around here at Christmas time, uh, whenever people put up these enormous light displays, which are wonderful, and a lot of times they raise money for charity, but you know they attract a crowd, and so the neighbors sort of have to to deal with all those crowds showing up, and you know that can be a little bit uh, annoying, but you know. It's, it's also cool when they do it. It is cool, yeah. I, I have to admit that sometimes I leave the lights on the Christmas tree for the next year, but they sell them like that now. Oh, so, so you just like put a bag over the tree and you're right. ready for the next and year. And put it in the box and See, you're always thinking. You're always thinking, I like that.